Maniac has opened the door, broken the border down, and what's going on in this country is a shocker. I was going to save that for this week about this new virus that's come up. You've heard about that one, right? One of Trump's main points. No, no, no. Let, let's stay there for a minute. Have you heard of the Zika virus? Z i k a. Zika virus. Do you know anything about it? No. What I'm saying is that. All right. Thanks for the call. I know. I know he's trying to drag me into a quagmire here where I can't get out of because I, I already got out of four little sand traps that he set up for me. He's such a sincere caller, that guy. He's gonna, he can only work for Media Matters or for Bernie Sanders. Or he could be George Soros' illegitimate first cousin. I don't know who he is. Zika virus expected to spread throughout America, says World Health Organization. The Zika virus is a mosquito-borne disease suspected of causing serious birth defects, expected to spread to all countries in the Americas, except Canada and Chile, the World Health Organization said. Zika has suspected but unproven links to microcephaly, in which babies born to women infected during pregnancy have abnormally small heads. The virus is already present in 21 of the 55 countries and territories across the Americas. Oh, the Americas? You mean... Oh, you mean south of the border Americas? Oh, you mean El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua? You mean all of those wonderful American countries that Obama brought in by the train load? It stressed that the Aedes aegypti mosquito, I love that, Aedes aegypti mosquito, which carries Zika and also dengue and the others, is already present in all countries in the Americas besides Canada and Chile. Oh, it emerged in Brazil last May. Oh, that's how it happened. Oh, it started in that uh, America, that South America. And the explosive spread of Zika virus to new geographical areas with little population immunity is a cause for concern, especially given the possible link between infection during pregnancy and babies born with small heads. We're not going to joke about microcephaly. So what does this tell you? It tells us that any nation that has no health screening is insane, and any nation that opens its borders to immigrants with diseases is equally insane. And any president who permits this to go on and prohibits such controls to be enacted is a criminal. And on that pleasant note, I'll take a quick break. That horn shaped me. Showed me there was a bigger world out there. So we're talking about the Zika virus. Pregnant women are at risk in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, nations. And of course, we have such a moronic president and such an evil Congress, mainly the Democrats. They will not slam the borders shut. They will not impose travel controls. It's a nightmare to understand that a nation like this has no leadership at all. And the link between Zika infection and pregnancy and uh, you know, babies born with small heads is amazing. And there's a surge in this incident, incidents in cross Latin America, mainly in Brazil. So the United States finally warned pregnant women against traveling to Brazil and these other countries. Now, this is weird because Brazil is gearing up to light the Olympic torch on August 5th and other Olympics. I, I, I myself could care less about the Olympics. Every year it's another Olympic. You know, Olympic this, Olympic that. It's basically to sell beer. So it's a big deal. Colombia, Ecuador, El Salvador, and Jamaica have advised women to avoid pregnancy altogether. An idea echoed by a top Brazilian health official. Can you believe this? So why do we permit women from Ecuador, Colombia, El Salvador, and Jamaica to even come into America? Why? Guatemala said Sunday it was raising vigilance levels at maternity wards. Bring in another 100,000 Guatemalan children. Go ahead. Bring them in by the train load. And when it starts affecting American children, who are you going to blame? Me? Some right-wing maniac? Tried to warn you, huh? But you didn't listen to him because he wasn't a good enough communist? Immigrants and epidemics. Never forget who wrote that. Me. I wrote it before I even started in radio. It's what really set me on a new course politically. There was such a fear of publishing a book by that title by New York publishers. I had had at that point six best-selling books in the health field. 
and I came up with immigrants and epidemics. And at the time, I was my co-author was the dean of a of a pr public health school, one of the most prestigious public health uh, professionals in the world. And we were going to co-author it together, and they wouldn't touch the book because they're afraid of offending immigrants. Can you believe this? And I'm talking 25 years ago. It's only gotten much worse. Okay, so what can I say to you? No travel warnings, no border controls, nothing. No travel warnings, no border controls. Just bring them all in. And World Health Organization says, oh, you don't need travel warnings. The most effective form of prevention is getting rid of stagnant water. You hear this? Like it's 1912. And personal protection, such as using bug repellent and sleeping on the mosquito nets. This is in 2016. They're telling you to get a sleeping net and, and mosquito uh, repellent. It's unbelievable to me. The agency said that while it is clear that Aedes mosquitoes transmit Zika, evidence of other transmission routes was limited. Here we go. You ready for this? All right, you ready for this? One case of possible person-to-person -person sexual transmission has been described. The virus, which in most infected people only means short-lived flu-like symptoms, could be transmitted through blood and had been isolated in human semen. I rest my case. The corruption in the United States of America is the greatest in the whole world. The insanity, the criminality of the leadership is perhaps the highest in the world. Why? Because they know better. They know better. And you're looking at some moron from Hollywood taking a selfie. That's more important to you than the Zika virus and closing the borders. That's all. Just look at the selfies day and night. Go on Instagram. Go on thisagram, datagram, and learn nothing. Be a moron. That's all. Just keep touching buttons and know nothing about reality. And think Hillary Clinton is a wonderful woman who wants to save you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Let, let it go. I don't care. Let it go. Let it go. I don't, I'm not at the hop anymore. Forget the hop. There's no hop with what Obama's done to this country, with what the Muslim fanatics are doing to the world. I can't listen to rock and roll anymore like that. Heavy metal, yes. That's it. Just like screaming inside. Then I get this email during the break. Are you ready for this? Now, you know right after the show, I'm running to the veterinarian for Teddy's cardiology appointment. It's not a big deal. I get it. It's just a dog. But he's my spirit friend, and I love him. And I don't mean love him like a human being, but I love him. Maybe in a better way than a human being. But the thing is, is that we're the only... We're limited by our language. I've taught you this before. We're limited by our English language, which has only one word for love. One verb for love. I love my mother. I love my wife. I love my child. I love this pizza. I love this ball game. I love my car. One verb, right? In Latin, there are 16 verbs for love. Each one is different. So you don't confuse loving your pizza with loving your girlfriend. And in America, because we can't confuse, uh, distinguish between loving pizza and loving our girlfriend, some of us actually are married to our girlfriend or to our television set. I'm taking my dog to the cardiologist because I love him. And his murmur, if it's not too strong, then they put him under anesthesia Wednesday to remove some teeth. Again, a dog, but people do these things these days. They're not like dogs in my, you know, my father's generation. They threw them in the garbage when they died. But they didn't all do that, by the way. I almost bought a house once, and I went in the backyard, way up here in Marin County. It was a, you know, like two, three acres. There was a, a pet cemetery in the back, and it was the most touching thing I had ever seen. It was one of the estates from the 1880s. There were like 20 dog graves, and each one had a little headstone with a date, you know, like fuzzy, uh, 1898, 1906, and they had a little poem about him. I was amazed by this pet cemetery. So I'm not alone in, in my feeling for a dog. But now I get this. There's a guy I was a friend with for years. We were very close friends. And he left the area, moved away. And I heard that he had cancer. I haven't been in touch with him. Uh, about a year ago, I heard he, was, he had cancer. And I lost his phone number. So I swear to God, an hour ago, I emailed his wife. I said, how's he doing? I'm not going to read his name. I'll just read an initial. It says, Jay is dictating what I am writing. But due to the drugs, his voice is weak. And t talking by phone will be difficult today. He dictated the letter below. Michael Savage, I am in blank hospital right now and hopefully home by the end of the week. 
The cancer is very aggressive and has spread to my liver. But my faith in my inner strength is so strong it is carrying me through this. I truly appreciate who you are and what you do for all of us. Your words over the airwaves have undoubtedly changed many minds to see the truth, and that is quite an accomplishment. I hope to be home by the end of the week and would love if you could visit and we can catch up. So I sent a, a reply. I'm not going to read it to you. But I'm giving you an example. It's the way of all flesh. It's the way of all, I mean, wherever you turn, wherever you turn, another one going down. Another one going down. The good ones, the good ones go down, and the, the evil ones, I don't, nothing happens to them. I see evil never, they never get diseases. They don't die. Look at the Castro filth. Evil, torturers, murderers, they're not dead yet. Not a heart attack, nothing. Nothing kills them. They're like the devil. Like the devil, and the disease doesn't take them. And the, and the good ones, I don't know, they, this guy was a good guy. Very strong man, by the way, no weakling. Very powerful guy. That's the worst thing is to see powerful men as they shrink. No, that's no joke. I had an uncle once. He was the athlete of the family. He ran in the 19, like, 30s in a New York marathon. I knew, I couldn't believe it. I always saw him as, like, a, you know, an old uncle kind of guy. I didn't know. Old to me was, like, 45, 50 when I was a kid. You know, old. Then when he got old, it was like I, they showed us pictures of him in a New York marathon. I didn't even know there was one. Slim, athletic, muscular. With a number on his chest, and he was like a vegetarian. Oh, liver cancer got him. Suffered like crazy. They tortured him to death, the cancer doctors. I went to that hospital. I'll never forget as long as I live. And my aunt, the Russian I told you, who took me into, who wouldn't trust the butcher to give her the meat. She trusted nobody because she was smarter than everybody. She'd go in the butcher store in the summer in the Catskill Mountains. When Moy, I can't even say his name because he could have relatives who could sue me. We'll say John the Butcher. She'd pick out chopped meat in the front, a steak to chop up for chopped meat. And instead of having the grinder in the front of the butcher store, he had it in the freezer. Now it's the summer. It's 103 degrees in South Fallsburg, New York. She has a fur coat on. He goes in the back. He shows her the steak that she picks out for her son to make into chopped meat because she wouldn't buy pre-ground chopped meat. That's how they were in those days. Not like you. You eat meat from, uh, you don't know where it's from. A hoof from Brazil, a nostril from China, uh, an intestine from, Bra from uh, Swaziland, all mixed up into hamburger meat. You're eating snout and hoof mixed in with gut. So she picked the steak in the front of the butcher store, and this guy, and the same ethnic group, by the way, this is not ethnic this, ethnic that, same ethnic group, spoke the same language, and he'd say to her, look at this beautiful steak. And he'd march into the freezer to grind it up. Now, I was the butcher boy. He didn't give her the steak. If anyone ordered a steak to grind up, he'd put it on the top shelf. He'd turn the machine on. Mm. So he had the machine working outside the freezer door. And he had pre-ground, like, chuck already ground up waiting to give them. Well, she knew his tricks. She'd bring a fur coat in the summer and go in the freezer with him to make sure he was grinding up the meat. So now I'm going to speed the clock forward. Maybe you're bored already. You're not, you, you, know, you want to hear a Trump all day long? Trump and Cruz, Cruz and Trump, Trump and Cruz and Cruz and Trump, Trump and Cruz and Cruz and Trump, Ronald Reagan, Constitution, Cruz and Trump, Trump and Cruz, Constitution, Constitution, Trump and Cruz, Trump and Cruz, National Review, Constitutional, Constitution, Trump and Cruz, Ronald Reagan, Conservative, 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 real Conservative, Trump and Cruz, Cruz and Trump. So she goes into the freezer, okay, to make sure that he doesn't cheat her on the Hamburg. Now, years later, my athletic uncle, who was a vegetarian all his life, has liver cancer, and he's dying in Long Island Jewish Hospital and moaning in the bed, and you want to bang your head through a, through a mirror when you hear that. The pain that people endure in this sick nation of ours because they don't give them the drugs that are available. They should put, put everyone on heroin. It's enough to make your wife want to go down to, like, the meanest streets in Harlem or wherever you have to go. Today, probably you don't have to go that far. Maybe you just go to the doctor. He probably has a stash in the closet and just get an injectable heroin. She screams at the young intern, who's doing nothing for my uncle's pain, and she says, what good are you? You can't cure and you can't kill. Now, this is a woman who never went to college. How come she knew that? How come she had such common sense? How come she, she did? That's how she, had, that's how she was. And I, sometimes I think that that's where I got my common sense from, from these people. These immigrant people who saw life as it was, made up their own decisions. They didn't need some moron in a newspaper to tell them what to think. They didn't need some idiot on, on television to tell them what to think. And they certainly knew all politicians were crooked and liars. I mean, they weren't shocked by that. You say to the politician, crooked and liars, that's all. What else do they need to know? They would want to get near them. 
So you're shocked by it? 